Uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, create a preamplifier for my spectrum analyzer so I can do some near field probing. Uh, my spectrum analyzer requires an external amplifier, and the ones that uh, are commercially available that were designed for it uh, are many hundreds of dollars, which is a bit more than I want to spend. I found this little amplifier from a company called Ramsey Electronics. It goes from 1 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, and I thought it might be a suitable component. Now, when I opened it up, I found it was a plastic case, which of course uh, isn't helpful for preamplifiers because it doesn't offer much shielding. Uh, even worse, actually, the construction is uh, really uh, hopeless for the application I'm hoping for. This is the input to the BNC jack, and you can see it has a long lead that runs to capacitor and then runs onto the circuit board. Same thing with the output. Uh, that lead length is actually almost a tenth of a wavelength uh, at 1 gigahertz, which is uh, absurd. Uh, basically, it's just simply an antenna. Um, and actually proved that even when I put a shorting uh, 50 ohm resistor on the input, oops, ah, that's the input, uh, the output still shows a signal, and that's because it's basically picking up uh, the uh, noise or the signals through the uh, the leads of the capacitor. So it looks like a really simple assembly. Uh, it just uh, isn't very well designed for my purposes. So I looked at the single IC that's on the board that actually is an amplifier. Let me pop up the data sheet. Uh, and it looks actually fairly appropriate. It looks like a, a reasonable choice for building a preamplifier. So the part looks good. Uh, the double sided circuit board, the use of through hole components, though, aren't so good. Uh, I'll see if I can fix that. Okay, so this is the original board, and I've uh, taken off the IC. It's just a SOIC 8. And uh, I'll throw away the rest of this assembly because it's just not going to work for a Neofield probe. These. Uh, Passers are simply too long. Let me uh, pop in the data sheet here and show how simple the circuit it is. Uh, it just requires the uh, actual amplifier and then three passives. Uh, what I really need to do is uh, make this distance here very, very small, and I want to get rid of any loop here to avoid any sort of antenna effects. Uh, this is also an inductance, which is not really appropriate for an amplifier. So uh, obviously, we'll go to surface mount technology. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, a prototyping board system here. Let me just insert the picture from DigiK I snagged it off of. Uh, it's a single-sided circuit board and sort of rapid prototyping. Uh, let me insert another picture. Uh, I need to basically get a ground plane onto it for shielding purposes and, quite frankly, just for ease of soldering. Uh, I'm going to use some copper tape. Uh, it's got an adhesive on it, and it's actually conductive adhesive. And I'll just cut it up with my X-Acto knife, and that will give me a nice uh, surface in the back to solder on. Uh, when all said and done, uh, let me just insert the picture of the, uh, the finished circuit board. Uh, there's basically an SMA input on one side, an SMA output on the other side. Uh, this capacitor hanging off is just to connect to a power supply. It's a bulk decoupling. It, it doesn't have to worry about lead length. Uh, the things that do, though, uh, are now very, very short paths. I basically have soldered uh, from this input here through a capacitor directly into the IC. Same thing going out, as short as possible paths. Now, I'm still going to need to shield these because this is uh, still an antenna. Uh, but now I've got a much more realistic chance of doing so. Uh, up here is basically just a little 5-volt uh, regulator. Uh, for whatever reason, they've actually used uh, a TO3 uh, for the regulator, uh, even though this thing only draws uh, a very small amounts of current. Uh, it's not a huge, it's not a power amplifier, signal amplifier. Uh, let me just zoom a bit further here so you can see the glorious construction. Um, all hand soldered, but uh, that works really well with little components. And uh, I'll just flip around the back here, and just to show the ground plane. So. Uh, the ground planes uh, provide a couple benefits. It's um, uh, shielding and also it provides a low impedance path for all the grounds. Um, and I didn't need to do any cutouts on it. I was worried they might have cut out the uh, plane a bit on the back here, but uh, the frequencies are low enough. So uh, here's a really just a very typical way of uh, getting a circuit to work in the RF domain uh, with uh, really short paths and a ground plane. So nothing too special. So uh, one uh, small last addition before I try powering it on, I have uh, obviously some copper tape on both sides of the board, uh, and that's forming essentially a, a RF shield. Uh, it doesn't look very pretty, but it's actually quite effective. Uh, and then peeking below that, I've used some uh, masking tape to avoid the copper tape, I'm sure, in the components. Uh, traditionally, you probably use Kapton, but uh, I can't find my roll of Kapton anywhere in my lab today, so um, that's all that's going on here. Okay, well here's the finished assembly. She's no beauty uh, mechanically, but electrically it's far superior to uh, what I started out with. I'm obviously powering it up from a loud power supply. There's a little decoupling capacitor sitting out here. Uh, input on this side, output on that side. Let me insert on my second camera the uh, spectrum analyzer output. 
Uh, you can see somebody's dead flat line, so it's not picking up any uh, of the signals. Uh, if you look closely, they've tuned it to about where the FM radio band is, uh, and uh, it's flat because it's not receiving anything because it's well shielded. And if I just put a, say, a little wire or something into this SMA connector just to give it a bit of signal path, uh, you can see the spectrum out of those can all of a sudden start seeing some signals. So that's good. Uh, that's the nature of wanting to do a near field probing. You want to uh, probe the RF fields just in one small area, and you want the amplifier only picking up those signals. So uh, I think this is going to work out well now. Okay, so here's uh, the near field probe in uh, operation. This is a piece of a uh, rigid coax. If you look at the little end here, you can see that uh, it just simply loops around and the uh, shielding is removed. There's a little exposed wire. So it's a very small pickup antenna, essentially. And uh, if you, uh, say, try to probe a board, here's a classic um, an Arduino. Uh, I'll just have the B camera there. You can see I've inset the picture. And as the probe comes close to the uh, board, of course, it senses the frequency. And as I move it away, it, of course, it vanishes. And, and that's the concept of near field probing. You can see I can sort of look for emissions in the circuit boards at very small areas. So, hey, I think I got myself a near field probe.